In this video, we'll be creating a backup copy job using Veeam Backup and Replication. This allows us to take an existing backup file and make a copy into a remote repository, a cloud repository, or even a local repository. We can also use compression and deduplication to help with bandwidth. One thing to consider, the first time that you run the backup copy job, it will make a full size copy of that backup file in the remote location. After that, it will use incrementals. This is something that you should keep in mind during your designing phase. Let's take a look at the demonstration. On the left side of the menu, you'll see inventory, and above inventory, we have selected to expand the ESXi server, and underneath, you'll see the production resource pool, and on the right side of the interface, you'll see a virtual machine called Tiny-Veeam. This is the machine that we're gonna be focusing on. Now, if we select Home, and go up to the backup category under jobs, you will see that there is a job called Backup Oracle and Tiny Veeam, and this is a VMware backup job listed right here. So now that we go under jobs, you'll see all of the jobs listed, including backup copy jobs. If we select backup copy, just so there's no confusion, there is one backup copy job via WAN accelerators. This one you will see in the interface as we move forward. I wanted to make sure there wasn't any confusion. So now we select at the top jobs and in the ribbon, you'll see backup copy for new backup copy job. And under here, you will see virtual machine and then vSphere backup. You could also do Hyper-V or even go straight to a Windows computer backup. We're gonna do virtual machine and vSphere. Under here, we're just going to call this Veeam Backup Copy Job Tiny Dash Veeam. So now we know what it's going to be, and we'll just leave the description as it is. Beneath here, you will see the option to select how many copies or how often we want to create copies. So in here, it's showing us once a day starting at 12 a.m. It would be good to go back to the backup job before you set this to find out when those backup jobs are being completed so you don't have any overrun between the backup job and the copy job that's based on those backups. We could also choose by hour or minute if we wanted to as well. So let's go to next. And under next, here's where we select the objects. So I'm going to select Add, and you'll see we can do from Infrastructure, from Backups, or from Jobs. I'm going to show you Jobs, but we're going to use the individual backup for our demonstration. So from Jobs, there's that job I talked about before, where we could base it on anything within this job, and this would do Oracle and Tiny Veeam. We're going to cancel out of that, and we're going to just select From Backups. Now under here, if I expand, you'll see that there's three under this one, three different virtual machines, and there's two under this one. I'm just going to select Tiny Veeam for this example because it's small and very quick. I'm going to select Add. Once I highlight this, you'll see the option for exclusions and source. Very briefly, I can exclude certain virtual machines from this copy job if I chose by selecting Add and in this example, I'm going to show full hierarchy. And I could expand through here. So if I had a job that had multiple VMs, I could choose to isolate or select them based on hosts and clusters. I could also switch to VMs and templates. And now that's all I'll see in the interface, similar to the VMware interface. And I could also do it by data stores. So if I select this, you'll see by data store as well. And there's tiny Veeam. We also have the option for tags, but in this environment, we don't have any tags configured. So let's select cancel because we don't want to exclude anything. We can also select the source. By default, you'll see it says any backup repository, and this is the most recent object state. So the most recent object state available might not be exactly where you want to pull your information. So you could also select a specific backup repository to ensure that you're always pulling from the right repository or repositories. Let's select cancel there as well, and we'll choose next. Now here we're looking at the target. So where are we pushing this to? 
specify the target backup repository, and it does say amount or amount of most recent restore points to keep and retention policies for full backups. That's something you want to keep in mind when you're sizing. So you'll see the drop down options. We have the default backup repository. We also have remote repository, the replica, and the scale out. And I'm just going to select remote. And you'll see that it shows us right here the information based on the remote repository. We could also choose map backup to be even more specific underneath that repository. We're not going to worry about that at this time. Also, too, we can choose how many restore points to keep and what kind of scheduling. Is it weekly, monthly, quarterly, or yearly? And this is where we would configure that schedule on what we selected. We're not going to go into a lot of detail into the advanced option. There are other videos that show this in more detail, but you'll see we have maintenance options. We also have storage options for data reduction and encryption, notifications if you wanted to send those, as well as scripts for pre and post job configuration. So let's cancel out of that and go to next. It does say we have a sovereignty violation. There is probably a policy configured in this environment that is not going to affect us just because this is a lab. So let's select next. Now, data transfer. We can do a direct transfer from the source to the target repository, or we could go through built-in WAN accelerators. Now, of course, first they would need to be configured, but if they are there, we could select the source and the target. In this example, you would assume that the source would be VBR because the target does say remote here. So we could select VBR for this one, and then we could select remote for this. And there can be multiple options for WAN Accelerator in here. But we're going to keep direct just because this is a demonstration and select next. Under schedule, we can select when to allow and restrict. At this point, it says any time continuous, but we could select during the following time periods only, and we could restrict when that content could be sent by selecting disable, and anything within that white area would be disabled from being able to be sent at that time. We're just going to select enable for everything, and then we select apply. Under the summary, you'll notice here there's information, but you'll also see over on this side that job will appear. So we're going to select Enable the job when I click Finish. So I select Finish, and there's the job listed, and it does say Starting. Now below here, you'll see Duration. We just want to watch this for this cycle because the last one said 2 minutes and 9 seconds but that was doing a full backup. That process has already been completed. What we're doing is making a copy of a completed backup. So under actions, you'll see step-by-step -step the processing process is being executed. But what we're looking for is below here where it says status and then above here under success. And that's also under status. So right now it's showing a 99% of how much data has been processed, and it now shows success right around 45 seconds. That's pretty quick, but understandably, it would be very quick because the job has already been processed. So that shows us how you would configure a backup copy job and some of the rules that you would apply during that backup copy job. Please check out more of the how-to videos and I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much.